I want to talk to you a little bit about my tackle box and what I carry when I'm fishing. Obviously, I do loads of different types of, of fishing. You know, sometimes I could be fishing on a little park lake, throwing maggot bags around, and the next time I could be on a huge canal in Belgium, or I could be on my boat at Orient. You know, there's so many different types of fishing that I do over the course of the year. And truth be known, you can't carry all of the kit all of the time. You know, otherwise you end up completely bogged down. So obviously I've got a, a big sort of storage container at home with all of the kit in sort of split up and then I sort of take apart my tackle box to match the sort of venue that I'm going to. Um, one thing that I do is I carry an awful lot of hooks no matter where I'm fishing. You know, I'm an avid hook sharpener and what that means is if I'm catching bream, tench, carp or even just winding in from the spot, nine times out of ten the hook is ruined. You know, you file them down to such a fine point the metal is so fine, you know, it only has to touch something and then it's burned and you have to start again. So because of that, I, I don't keep my hooks in the tackle box. I keep them in the lid of the largest size compact. I've got them all in there. I've got some solid bags in there and a few sort of, just a few spare items, you know, that I, I don't want to clutter my tackle box up. I've got some hooks in there, but this is like all my spares and everything that I need for every eventuality. Underneath the tackle box, I've got my leg core, got some split shots, some dark matter tubing, uh, line stripper, screwdriver, a few extra lighters and some carp care. But the main thing is the tackle box. You know, I used to have um, a tackle safe and that is good if you're only targeting one water. If you're only targeting one water and you've got it absolutely refined down to carrying exactly what you need, then that's perfect. You know, you can be ultra minimal. A lot of the time I'm targeting lakes or venues that I've never been to. So I am sort of packing for a few eventualities. So I've got a few things that probably never see the light of day, but at the same time I might need them. So that's why I've got that extra space in the tackle box. You'll see that in the lid, I've got a lot of plastic items, some metal ones. You don't want to fill the lid with loads and loads of metal, otherwise it'll get really, really heavy. But I've got a few swivels and I've got a few um, rig rings, but mainly it's sort of like leg clips, tail rubbers, heli safes, um, boilie stops, a few bits of foam, some rubber beads, you know, that sort of thing. In the main part of the tackle box, I've got obviously my hook links, my marker elastic, shock leader, PVA tape, again, more, more hook links, uh, Vaseline for me hook points, uh, a couple of packets of split shot, a couple of pairs of scissors, my floss. I've got a little uh, free compartment box down there. In the top part is mainly hook sharpening stuff. I've got, I've got my pliers, my crimping pliers, sorry. I've got the, the vice that I use for, for hook sharpening, my SP Max file, uh, a little stone for finishing, a magnifying glass, again, a couple of lighters. Um, this, this is where I put my sharpened hooks. You know, I sharpen them myself and then I put them into this and that just keeps them nice and fresh. And underneath that, I've got my baiting needles and stuff. So, you know, this is how I'm using it, which it looks pretty bare. You know, a lot of people have the, um, like loads of different compartment boxes because they are packing for more eventualities. But um, I try to keep, keep it more minimal, if you know what I mean. I am sort of being sort of quite picky at home, taking out what I don't need putting in what I do need. And I always, you know, I spend, my missus is always giving me a hard time. Um, I spend a lot of time in the garage sort of prepping for sessions because I really do, um, I, I want to be organized because when you are organized and everything's in its place, you can just fish that much better. The compact range is rapidly expanding. As you can see, I've got a couple of carry in front of me. And just to talk you through the essence of these, it's the fit, the existing compact pouches. So I've got one of the 100s in there. This is my tackle bag. This is what I keep everything in that I take every single time I go fishing. So in this particular one, I've got my tracer battery in there. Um, and there's four pockets on each of these carry each designed to take the same size of compact. Now at the front, I haven't got one in there. I've basically got another pair of glasses, my receiver, Propolis, that sort of thing, just odds and sods in the front there. The other one at the front has got baiting tools, my Tufty torch, which is an absolute godsend, um, spoms and what have you in there. You know, so you haven't got to use the pouches in them, um, but that's what they were designed for. That side has got another pouch in, and that one has got overflow kit in there. You can see a little camo pouch as well. They're due to be coming out soon. And if I talk you through the internals of this bag, it's been basically designed, again, to fit the stuff that we've already got. So it's just long enough to fit a long rig safe inside. And I've got two of those in there. And then just going a bit further down, we've got the new compact. 
for the tackle safe. So that's all my terminal tackle in there, absolutely everything I need. Little tiny one for my leads. And then at the bottom, I've got a 140, which I keep all my singles kit inside. So it'll take two of those at the bottom, plus these ones down the side of it. And then obviously that over the top and the rig safes as well. Got a pouch on the inside. I've got a prototype catapult in there that I'm not gonna show you yet. And then there's another one on the back. So loads of pockets, and as you can see, minimal styling, a nice carpy green color. We thought we'd go with that to begin with, take all the camo off of it, and just see how this one is received. And then maybe we will expand into some camo at a later date. The little one next to it is the one that Tom and Damo use in their fishing. They take less kit than me. Still takes the 100 size compacts on the side and on the front as well. Still got a pouch on the back. And then if I open that up, I've got my brew kit in this one at the moment, because I'm not taking any cooking kit with me. So you can see I've got a couple of 140s at the bottom side by side. That's got all my personal bits and pieces in there, all my sort of tablets and what have you, suntan lotion, all that sort of thing. And the other one's got all my sort of cooking stuff in there as well. I would use a bigger one than this if I was going to use it as my proper um, food and cooking bag. And there's going to be a carry-all larger than these two and then a bigger one still because we know some people take loads and loads of kits. So four carry-alls. There's one size of rucksack as well, which Daryl has been using during this session. And that's aimed at sort of the guy that's doing reasonably long sessions. Maybe he doesn't want to put his stuff on top of the barrow. It's nice and compact as well. Obviously it takes the pouches in the pockets on the sides of it. Really comfortable on your back. And we're just going to start with the one size of that and see if there's demand for a bigger one at a later date. Also cool bags. Damien's been using cool bags for years and years in his fishing for his bait and for his food. And he's developed like a double layer system. And if you put the blocks all the way around the inside of it on the pockets that have been provided, it keeps everything cool for absolutely ages. And that double insulation makes all the difference. They're very rigid, those bags as well. Daryl's been using them here as his sort of cooking bag and his food bag. And there's a smaller one still that will take sort of two or three kilos of boilies. The big one will take nearly 10 kilos. And then moving on from there, of course, there's going to be rod bags in the range. I'm using the three up two down style rod bag at the moment. I've never used one of those before. And I have to say, I was quite impressed with it. It's very, very compact and offers good protection to your rods and really keeps them in quite a condensed space. And like all of this luggage, it's got handles for putting it onto your barra and then lifting it into the car as well. And the straps on all of these are really well balanced. They fit nice on your shoulder if you are going to carry it that way. And the ones on these carriers can actually be unclipped. So rather than have them get in the way during your session, you can actually unclip them, store them, and then clip them back on at the end. And to go with the three up, two down, there's also a three rod sleeve and a two rod sleeve. So if you want to keep your spot and marker separate from your fishing rods, you can do. Or if you're just doing day sessions, you you're only taking two rods, you can do that as well. So we've tried to strip everything down, style it as beautifully as we possibly can, make it look as carpy as we possibly can, but most importantly, make it functional. The new Delkims have been on sale for almost a year now, but I think it's fair to say from when they very first came out, they've definitely divided opinion. Lots of people out there, they love that old school look of a Delkim and didn't want to see it change. Let's face it, none of us like change, do we? But, I think by doing what they've done, by making it slightly shorter, by narrowing it up, they've made a real modern, cult looking bite alarm, but still maintain that old school Delkin vibe. Whilst it's nice that it looks nice, more importantly is the technology side to it and the improvements that they've made. If you are a Delkin user, you'll be pleased to know that that, that double warble tone is still there. A Delkin in full flight with that double tone is one of my favourite things about carp fishing and always will be. I've been an avid Delkin user for over 15 years and any other bite just doesn't sound quite as good to me. But with the vibration sensor that it has, it's, it's not just about how it sounds, it's what it also does from a practical point of view. If in the depths of winter you are still getting out there fishing, because there's no moving parts to register you get in a bite, it means that should you have an absolute whiteout, a mega frost, you're still going to register a bite. There's no roller wheel that can freeze up that can maybe make you miss that all important bite in the depths of winter. A couple of other little features on it as well, you've got an LED adjustment. So if you're fishing in bright sunshine and you have it at the brightest setting, you'll still be able to see if you get a couple of bleeps and work out which one it is quickly. But on the flip side, in the depths of night, that brightness could hurt your retinas if you're not careful. So you can program it right down so it just gives you a nice dim glow across the swim when you get that bite. 
Now, one thing you'll notice is the lack of one of the dials. There's always been three on a Delkin. Don't panic. You've got V for volume, self-explanatory. You've got R for response or sensitivity, I guess, is, is how you'd remember it. But you can now use that in conjunction with an internal beep speed to make this the most, del most sensitive Delkin bite alarm there's ever been. Now, the one that's missing for me is the all important one. It's the tone setting. Don't panic, it's still there. Again, it's within the internal settings. There's 64 different tones in the new Delkim, so you really can find the one, find the sweet spot that is perfect for you. You'll notice there's a couple of buttons on the front. They're actually your on and off switch and how you do a lot of the programming. And again, that's put quite a few people off because they, maybe a bit like me, you're a bit of a technophobe, but there's instructions. As long as you follow them, it's really, really simple to use. And if I can program my Delkims, you can definitely do yours as well. Finally, on the alarm itself, there's a couple more points I want to talk about, one of them being the anti-theft. Delkin were the first bite alarm manufacturer to add any sort of anti-theft to their alarms, and that worked by um, you being in your bivvy, you've got your receiver set, someone turned your bite alarm off outside, and that went into meltdown. Well, that's still exactly the same, but to further protect it, they've added what's called an IMU, an inertia movement unit and it works the same as a, as a Nintendo Wii remote. So now, if someone just grabbed your bank sticks, grabbed your pod, and made a run for it, that alien movement in the alarm will once again send the receiver into meltdown. So that's the head. There are a load of other features on there as well, which are fully covered in the instructions that you get with it, but let's have a little look at the receiver too. Once again, giving it a modern look, looks pucker, but the improvements they've made from a technology point of view far outweigh how it looks. Now that it's gone fully digital, it means that any beep that's registered on your bite alarm will now register on your receiver as well. It will not miss a beat. From a range point of view, it's got three different settings on the standard range, the middle one if you like. They've tested it in a straight line, in a clear view, to 750 metres. Now you'll never be that far if you're rods. If you are, that's incredibly bad angling, but it just shows the improvements that have been made over the original ones. I actually use mine in the minimum setting because it's the way to get the best battery life out of it and it still means that within 50 metre radius you're picking everything up. Now I'm never that far off my rod so it's all I need to use. There are other features on here as well but one of my favourites already is the do not disturb. Essentially I fish with my bite alarms on zero volume and all the volume just comes from this but because I like to fish my Delkims really sensitive because I love the noise, in the middle of a massive rain shower the rain bashing on the bite alarms, absolutely sends this bonkers. Historically, it meant I've had to go out, turn the sensitivity down, get soaking wet, but not anymore. I simply press a couple of buttons on here. It puts this into a, into a do not disturb or silent mode. So whilst the rain is just tapping the alarms, this makes no noise. But after four seconds of continual movement, so if I get a bite, this will once again kick back in. Now it's a brilliant setting as long as you use it correctly. If you're fishing to snags, to lily pads, weed, anything like that, then it's not for you. But just plain open water fishing, it's been an absolute godsend to me on a couple of occasions. There you go, that gives you a brief look. Trust me, they've got a host of other features as well. Every alarm comes with a full list of instructions as well as a hard case as well. So if you're a Delkin user already, it's got all the features that you've come to know and love, plus some new ones. And if you're not a Delkin user, how about popping down your tackle shop and having a little play? Very lucky. Another lovely new bit of kit. This is the Tackle Safe Compact. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but um, I did a public apology to Dovey um, after I really got into using the Tackle Safe. I used to use a big Fox box. I never thought the amount of gear that fits in here would fit in here. And um, this is everything that I use over and over and over. Um, and uh, we wanted something really that complemented this. Obviously, you can't get spools in there, things like the boom material and that. You can't get the crimp pliers in there. So we wanted something that fitted with it. So basically, that obviously just drops beautifully into there. But if I take it out of the way to show you the little compartment underneath. So we've got a plastic tray in there, a moulded tray, obviously done perfectly for the size of all the different bits. So you can see I've got the big spools in there. You could get two big spools in there if you wanted to, um, but I've just got my boom material in there. Obviously IQ would fit in there as well, uh, mouth trap too. Um, and then a few spools at the top of that, um, just to take up that space. 
Um, I seem to take quite a lot of the smaller spools with me, like lead cores, hybrid stiff, a little bit of 30 pound um, end trap semi stiff. It's amazing how many you end up with um, to cover all different kinds of fishing. And then the next tray along, there you can see there I've got my Kamakuras in there and there's two trays that will take those. Um, so you can have loads if you want to, but that's enough stock for me. Next one along, instead of the Kamakuras, I've got spools in there again. The next one along from that, you can see there's all the bigger sort of uh, rig items. I've got my Jag clamp in there, um, plus my, my hook file, my uh, crimp tool as well, sharp knife, some extra needles and bits and pieces underneath. And this will actually come out. If I do that there, you just sort of do it at an angle. Take that out of there. That's the guy out of the tray. Obviously, it would stay in there for pretty much all of its life, um, but it shows you it's a solid molded tray. You can't move the sections around in there. They're already done, so nothing can break or anything. And that just slides back into there. And if that wasn't enough, in the lid, we've got loads of compartments in there. So at the back, what I asked for was four compartments to get the hook wallets in. So I've got my curves in that one. I've got my, my uh, wide gape X's in there. I've got my long shanks in there and I've got my choddies at the other end. And then in front of that, I don't know if you can see there, there's another big compartment for even more bits and bobs. I've got loads of extra packets of hooks in there. But that is an absolute myriad of kit that just goes into one compact. If you put that in there, bomb, zip that up. That is absolutely made for the job. And if, like me, you like the tackle safe, that's got to be in your armory. There are three new additions to the compact range. Uh, first of all, these two air dry bags. So one that takes sort of two and a half, three key of bait. Another one that takes, believe it or not, probably eight or nine key of boilies. Now I recommend if you are transferring boilies out the freezer into these, pour them into a bucket first out the freezer bag and then into these and they won't spill everywhere. As you can see, nothing revolutionary about them. You know, nice airflow and a lovely camo pattern on them. Nice little details as well, very strong handles, but they are effectively just an air dry bag. So if you want to keep the rats off them, keep them up in the trees, keep the bait moving around when you first put it in there to stop the baits in the middle, keep holding the moisture and going off. So they are the air dry bags. Then this little fella, this is clever. So this is the boily caddy. And the nice bit about this, you can see poking out the top there, we've got a watertight inner to it. That has got a multitude of uses. You will have seen me pouring water over the fish with this and also testing my pop-ups in there as well. So fill it up with water, use it like a bucket for doing your pop-ups. And then if you're gonna use it for baiting up, just slot it back into there, like so. And a little tip, right? If your throwing stick in and your baits are splitting, we all know the trick of, of just putting a little bit of water in the throwing stick, throwing it out, and then the bait stops splitting for a little while, and then the water disappears, and the bait starts splitting again, and you have to do it again. If you put your boilies in there and put the tiniest little dribble of water and just shake them up in there, they just get a little glassy effect on the top of every single boilie. You put those out with a stick, and you never have to re-wet the stick. Now, obviously, then you can just dry it out and then use it for whatever you're going to. If you're gonna put baits with oil in them, then use that so it doesn't bleed through onto the outer. And then the outer, again in the lovely camo material, nice styling to it, but that would double as an air dry bag if you wanted it to. Yeah, so if you're just doing an overnight session or just a 24 hour, you could probably get a couple of kilos of boilies in there. They will carry on drying out during that session, getting harder and harder, so they're gonna go out the stick better and better. But we've tried to think of everything. Like I say, they look really nice, but they're functional as well. Carp care, it is one of the most important, if not most important aspect of fishing. You want to see our fish in tip-top condition. Now, if we get a hook hold that needs treating, or we've lifted a scale, or we've had a little bit of abrasion from spawning, it's really important we treat that area. Now, new to the range, we've got the Popolis and the Ulcer Swab. Now, all you simply need to do is dry off the affected area that needs cleaning. I get a dry towel, dab around that area, say for instance, lifted scale, and add some Ulcer Swab. This will help disinfect and clean that area. Simply put a little bit on your finger, mask the area that needs cleaning. Once the area has been cleaned and disinfected with the Ulcer Swab, we now need to seal the area with the Popolis. Simply, over the top of the Ultra Swab, apply the Propolis. A little bit of lake water will help seal that now, so when the fish goes back in the water, he's off fighting fit. <laughs>